let's uh, do that that part. Go ahead and let it down. Slowly. Some petrol in there and just, <laughs> just put a match over it. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Boom. Break clean. <laughs> break clean. He uses that for everything. He, he loves how much brake clean I, I use. Yeah. <laughs> you live across the street from the guy, you know how much uh, brake clean the guy goes through. <laughs> can't, you can't open your windows in December time. <laughs> don't open, <laughs> don't open the windows. Steve's got brake clean. What the hell's that fog coming through there? Yeah. <laughs> I got I gotta order another case of it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess now this we'll flip this over and uh, we'll take the well paint off while we're here. That's, that's what he said. He says if there's a problem with the oil pan, keeping it from turning over. Right. Oh. So, Nothing touching that crankshaft. Mm -mm. Hmm. All right. Well, moment of trout. Let's uh. Mess that up. I bet you it'll turn now. I bet you. 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 All right. Well, we got work to do then. Um. Let's get this off. So we need to take this off, and then take these two off. They're, these are all. Those are twelves. That's a ten. So you got a ten, James. Doug got a ten. Seize the motor. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. We're going to have to tip it upside down, right side up, and look down, look down the spark plug holes. So. Stiff. Yeah. Could it be the oh, things they put in her? Well, there's no no, there's no spark plug, so there's no compression. No compression, okay. I can understand where your thought is on that if we had compression. I'm trying to think what a motor shop would have screwed up. Yeah. Is wrong it wrong spark plugs. It's it's getting a little bit better, but and also, I mean, your timeline's also what you said some of those. All right. Um, so if we set it up on top dead center uh, with the with the lobes either facing each other or, for, or facing away from each other. That would be on the top dead center of the compression stroke. Then we can pull the timing belt off and then we can pull this head off. We'll leave the intake manifold on it <coughs> and the exhaust manifold. And the exhaust manifold is not bolted. That's bolted to this pipe. We gotta take this pipe off. Intake manifold, we gotta take this hose off and everything else will come up with it. And that's the back of the block there. So, okay. So. Rags over there, Steve. How you doing? Good. Orders look pretty good. Yeah, yeah I mean, like it was really, really tight. You know, it didn't want to spin, so yeah, yeah. taking her, taking her down to the head. Yeah, now we can turn it over. You see, it's still tight. Easy. And 
tight right there. Oh. That's a lot. It should be spinning. Really, it should almost be freewheeling. Yeah. All right. So we drop the crank and <laughs> hey, take her. We see, keep investigating. Yep. Wow. I really thought we'd find something right now. Yeah, me too. It's but, a monster of the oil. Isn't it though? <laughs> That's what we noticed. That's one of those high capacity ones. <laughs> he, was, he was sure that this was up against the crankshaft, the windage trip. And I, uh, that I mean, it's thin. It's thin. It should it doesn't make it. It should bend it. Noise. It, it will clearance itself. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. So, but you know, like he said, this was a rebuilt motor, and he, when he put it in, it wouldn't turn. He was done with it. That's where he stopped. Oh. So oh. We are, we are ongoing that process. But he, his story was his buddy was racing it, blew the head gasket. So he pulled the engine out, had it rebuilt, and got it put back in, and went to turn it by hand, and don't give it done. So where we are from there, I, you know. Barely imagine the amount of cuss words coming out of oh. his mouth when he, after spending all that yeah, money. Absolutely. Woo, feels like there's not a part of the bearings in the chat. Yeah. Maybe he put new bearings and got them, maybe he needed oversized bearings. Which means I'll have to plastic. Or maybe he put oversized bearings in. Well, if you put oversized, the holes would be bigger. No, they would be smaller because they grind the shaft down. So yeah. So it, this could have been his his rebuilder could have made yeah, a mistake. So you have to get into the right? I don't have it with me. I have to order it up. Let's uh, crank this back over. Good. It's getting easier every minute. <laughs> Wider too. Yeah. <laughs> you, you should have seen the cluster part that we did trying to get this all situated. We first put this on the I stand and instead of putting the, the, the arms on the ears, we put them in holes up on the oil pan. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I, I'm in the measure twice, cut once. <laughs> so then, then, then we get it all situated, and I, I see how long this bolt is. Yeah. I put a bunch of spacers to make this not sit so far out. But then when we tried to turn it, it was hitting the turn it back. <laughs> it's how steam keep us here a little longer to hang out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> more fun than me sitting in traffic. Oh God, I bet. Jamie was saying that we got ugly up. Traffic coming here. So we missed some of the teardown of this motor and uh, in the investigation of why that crankshaft would not rotate. And uh, we got the cylinder head off, couldn't find any problems with there, turned the motor back around. And the first thing we did was started with the uh, connecting rod caps. And what we found when we pulled number three off as soon as we pulled number three off, then the crankshaft was really easy to turn. So we're trying to find out why, well, we investigated, we did find out why, but uh, it, it, we had to look closely to find out why that was the problem. And it turned out, whoever reassembled this motor, it was a simple mistake, they just reversed the cap. And uh, so uh, we pulled everything off. I today pulled the main caps off and I found one of the main caps also reversed. But luckily the engine wasn't ran in that condition so the bearings on the mains were brand new. They had zero score marks. Um, I don't know if I still have the bearings for the, the old ones. I'll be right back. And... We're back. So um, 
good. I don't know how well you can focus in on that. Can you see the grooves? So there's that one and that one. So both of these bearings, they're, they're new, but they have score marks and probably because they were put on backwards. So I went ahead and ordered a new set of rod bearings and I'm putting them in now. Um, so engine wise, we have a fresh rebuilt motor and it'll be even more freshly rebuilt when I get done with it. But that was the cause of the uh, crankshaft not being able to turn. And I, and I say not being able to turn, even with a big uh, pry bar, not pry bar, but uh, breaker bar on the end of the crankshaft, there was so much resistance that it was turning the entire engine and not just a crankshaft. So there was a lot of, a lot of binding up in that. Um, the crankshaft, from my experience, looks like it's okay. I don't need to send it out. And in fact, we just got this, got the number one piston in and this is turning pretty darn good. So, <laughs> there. So anyway, um, I'm gonna continue on reassembling this motor and hopefully by our next uh, race meeting, we'll be able to uh, get this thing in the back in the car, everything back in and maybe even hear it run. Uh, still a lot of work to be done between now and then. We hope we get it all set up, but at least we have a document of what was wrong with this engine. And the only part that we've had to buy or that we have to buy would be a cylinder head gasket set, the head stud kit and uh, main or crank uh, connecting rod, connecting rod bearings. That's it. Uh, everything else we'll be able to reuse and not have any issues with that. So keeps the budget down, which is the goal. So stay tuned.